My name is Paula McDade. I'm the host of Brilliant Awakening TV and the creator of the Brilliant Awakening brand. Really excited to feature Rosie today, Rosie Thompson, on our uh, broadcast. She is an author. She is a nonprofit leader, the leader, uh, the creator, the founder of One Person Incorporated. Um, she's going to talk more about that in a moment, but she just recently also became a published author, Movers, Shakers, and Stand Buyers. Um, and I really want to get into this content. So welcome, Rosie. Thank you, Ms. Medade. It is such an honor and a blessing to be here with you today and our listening audience. We've had many technical difficulties, but obviously there is a message from the messenger in which he wants to relay because otherwise the enemy would not have been fought, have not fought us for so long on getting on the uh, listening audience to them. And so I just want to acknowledge God right now, his presence, his spirit to lead God and direct and speak to us and through us and even to meet his people where they're at and to give them an encouraging word today. So I just wanna thank you for having the opportunity to be on Brilliant Awakening TV. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now I see what's happening. Okay. <laughs> I just figured out what's happening. So perfect. We'll just eliminate that and we'll stay over here on Zoom. Okay, can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine, beautiful. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. So basically what I needed to do was just pay attention to Zoom, not YouTube, cut that all the way off so I could finally hear. Okay. So this is the beginning of the interview and we're just going to start over as if none of that other stuff happened. I'm going to edit this okay. um, down to the beginning so that we get the raw you know, footage and not all the other stuff that happened prior to this. So welcome to Brilliant Awakening TV. My name is Paula McDade. I am the host, the creator of Brilliant Awakening, the movement actually. So not only do we have Brilliant Awakening TV, we have Brilliant Awakening Magazine, as well as the Brilliant Awakening Anthology Series, uh, brilliant stories by women who have encountered trauma in their lives, but they have overcome and have such amazing testimonies. So today on our broadcast, we have one of the most profound individuals that I have the privilege of knowing and calling friend. Uh, she is a published author, newly published author with her book, Movers, Shakers, and Stand Buyers. She's also a nonprofit leader. She's the founder of One Person Incorporated, and she's going to talk more about that organization. Uh, but she's just an amazing woman of God. She's been uh, minist in ministry for several years now. She's a mother, a grandmother, so many amazing things, as well as a helping professional. She's a registered nurse. And so I, it's my privilege and my honor to welcome to our broadcast today, Ms. Rosie Thompson. Thank you so much, Ms. Paula, for that introductory. Man, I don't know what else I can say to come behind. <laughs> but one thing I do want to say, beautiful, is that you are so precious and you've been such a jewel. And I tell you what, age has been on your side. You hear me? Uh -huh. Because it seems like the, the more season we do get, the more God has been able to pull out what has always been there. And to see you sitting on that side where you're at, it's been an honor to see what God has done in your life. And thank you for the intricate details and just the hand that you've played in helping me, assist me. Someone who, grad, who did not graduate high school, tried eighth grade, well, I finished up eighth grade, but I tried ninth grade three years in a row and just called it simply quit. Wow. But I wow. tell you what, when God begins to pe put people in your lives, when you begin to give him your yes, there's absolutely yes. nothing that he can't do to bring about his best in you. And that's what this, this here interview is all about. We have so much within each and every one of us, yes. but many of us do not see the potentials, the God-given potentials, not the world's yes. potentials, not our right. potentials, but the God-given potentials that is within each and every one of us. And we have to get step aside. That's we have right. To lay aside some things, and we have to get beyond some things in order to see that and listen to see what God has allowed me to see in you, and even the hand that you played in my life. Listen, I can go back to years ago. <laughs> Song together, did ministry together, 
uh, did concerts together, all because of the gifts that were in you. God made room for me to be a part of that. And the Bible says your gifts will make room. Will make room. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, you you pretty much kind of started, jumped off the interview. Um, I was going to ask you, well, first of all, let me just let the audience know. So Rosie and I have a relationship that goes back as far as 20 plus years. I've known uh, this woman, this amazing woman for quite some time. She came into my life when my children were very small. Um, radio broadcast. Back then I was doing music ministry and she heard my one of my songs on the radio and connected with me um, that day and our relationship began and listen, it has been a ride. It has been quite a ride. It's like she said, we've watched one another over the years and continue to stay connected and continue to stay, you know, uh, in relationship and it's just been amazing to see what God has done. And so now all these years later, Rosie is now a, a published author and I've had the privilege of being um, her publisher. And I can tell you, it has been so rewarding to watch you blossom and bloom into this, you know, you're a writer, you're someone who, you know, thought per perhaps you would never be able to publish a book or write a book, but, uh, you know, because of your education, but God is truly, um, you know, he's shown himself mighty on your behalf. So um, I want to make sure, can you hear me okay? Because my speakers are indicating they're not working. Okay. I so can hear make sure. you, but there is a little feedback distortion. There's some feedback. Okay. There right. we go. As you come in, it's clear, Ms. Paul. It's clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move in and I'm also going to move my phone away from uh, the field of of sound. Okay, so what I wanted to ask you, uh, the first question I wanted to ask you, a lot of people right now are quarantined. They're at home and they may have a few things to do around the house, but you, you know, pretty soon you run out of things to do. And so this would be the perfect opportune time to write that book that God has placed in your spirit. Okay, so what I want to know from you is how long did it take you from God speaking to you and saying you have a book on the inside of you to actually completing writing and publishing this book? <laughs> well, let me say this. As I, as I honored God and was obedient to the instructions that he gave me, not knowing where it was going to lead me to, I tell you what, by the time I went out and got the material that God told me to get, which I thought was going to be recording for the dream that, I, that he would give me, by that next day, that afternoon, I had written, I believe it was the first cup, the first chapter or so of the book. And mm -hmm. so the duration of actually writing the book, Miss Paula, only took about three months. Okay. It so it took about three months to get it down. Perfect. 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 Okay. So, and then I'll get to this other point that I was trying to make. So mm -hmm. from the time you knew you were to write the book to finish, it was three months. So this is for my audience. I really want to let you guys know, it does not take forever to write a book. Some of you are thinking it's going to take years. It's going to take five years. And depending on the type of book, it may take a little longer. But mm -hmm. if you're writing a memoir, if you're writing your story about your life, you know your story in and out. Yes. It doesn't take long. <laughs> You know what happened, you know who was in the story, you know all of the ins and outs. So really realistically, 90 days, three months is a realistic timeline for writing a story. So I asked you that question because a lot of times people will hold on to books for five, 10 years. God told them to write their book five years ago and they still haven't completed it. So that was my point in asking the question was to find out kind of you know, from you, like when God first spoke to you and put it on your heart, kind of how long did it take you to get into obedience and then complete the three months? Yes, yes. Now, I'll tell you this. The thing about obedience, the key in that is to be active and do it swiftly and quickly when you're, quickly. Getting, when you're getting instruction. Because the longer you sit back and wait, the longer yes. it's going to take you to honor God. And then you're going to forget what he told you to honor him in, well, That's your right. mind is going to tell you, the enemy is going to try yeah. to trick you what you're yeah. supposed to do. But mm -hmm. if you move swiftly and quickly on whatever instructions God has given you and you don't worry about the hows and the winds and the ifs and the buts, all that, yes. getting self out the way, mm -hmm. but trusting God every step of the way that he wants to take you into writing that book, then it will come to you. And when I say that, if you have that in you, an inspired author, writer, 
of any type of a book, you need to make sure you have some type, something alongside you, no matter where you go, be it pencil, paper, or recording right. or whatever, because you never know when you're going to be inspired uh, about the next chapter, what that chapter is going to be titled, and then what to put in it. And so right. as God gives you that piece of the puzzle right then, and he tell you, okay, go and sit before the computer or wherever you're going to be typing this out, then it's going to pour out of you. It's not going to be you. If it's Mm -hmm. you, it's not God. You allow God by his spirit to guide you. And then that's what makes the process easier and lighter. Yes, yes, definitely. I agree, totally. Um, And yeah, obedience is one of the subjects that you talk about in your book. Um, You talk about it quite a bit because your life has been guided by obedience. And, you know, you didn't make it seem like, oh, it was so easy. And I just woke up one day and was obedient. You know, you told the real truth about it and how it came about um and some of the times when you had to kind of get get a little you know chastisement or (laughs) or discipline you know behind it um but you you were truthful and that's one of the things I love about this book so the title is Movers, Shakers, and Standbyers so explain the title and what that means so in life uh in this world you know God made us all differently Mm -hmm. you know we're very unique And we try so much and so hard to mimic others or even mimic the world. Mm -hmm. And that's something we have to get away from because we will never understand who we are in Christ and then why we were created, what purpose we're supposed to fulfill. So movers, there are many movers in this world, but then what direction are they moving in? Then Mm -hmm. shakers, shakers come along, they come and shake, rattle and roll some things up, get some things moving and grooving, okay? And then you have those that that are standbyers. They stand by idle, watching life. No matter what part of life it is we're supposed to participate in, mm-hmm. and watching it it's go by them. They're just standing right. by them, not mm-hmm. living life, just existing in life. And so in this book, you got to ask yourself, who's been the movers the most in this world? It should be the body of believers, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> who's, been, who's been shaking up foundations in this world where the right foundations need to be laid? It's supposed to be the believers, the body of right. Christ, right? right? And then who's been standing by idols? Now, I know that there are a lot of believers in the world, but we need to see more believers actively stand up, assume the position and the Mm -hmm. callings of what God has put in birth and purpose in each and every one of us. Therefore, we will do the moving. Therefore, we will do the shaking up of the foundations that where God needs to come in and lay a different foundation. And we, the body, we won't stand by idol anymore. Mm. I don't know why we do stand by idol. This is something that we have to go before God to understand, Lord, why do I have a fear? Right. Why have I been stagnant? Lord, why have I not moved, progressed further ahead? And I'll tell you this, Paula, you can relate to this as well, sis. There are so many just generational barriers that yes. we have faced. We've mm-hmm. not overcome. We have been fearful behind them. We yeah. have transfigured ourselves. We've worn masks. We've adorned ourselves in so much because of prior generational curses and barriers. That's right. And, and because of that, we don't understand who we are. Who we are. So, Come on now. And it was not until I gave God that one thing, Paula, that Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to take to my grave and allow it to be laid buried Mm -hmm. deep down within me because there are a lot of dreams. There are a lot of hopes. There are a lot of visions buried in the graves right today. Wow. And so God said, Rosie, I need you to be that one. Okay. I need you to be that one that's going to come forth and tell your story, your story. Now, my story may have consisted of other people, but guess what? I'm not here to shame anybody. Right. But, but I got to tell my story. And yes. This book, Paula, you, you, you were, not only were you my book cover, you did some editing for me and mm-hmm. you actually read this this manual and that's you right. actually, you, 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 you saw what God was doing in it. And then you know me. You yeah. know my heart. You know yes. my spirit. And then knowing me, knowing me means that, okay, Rosie, because when we first met, oh, Rosie was hiding behind a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was moving, but I was still hiding behind a lot. And when I say I was hiding, I didn't know that I was hiding. Mm-hmm. Because what God did today, he could have done it a long time ago. Paul, right. Right. The fact that I gave God that one thing, being sexually violated as a little girl. See, mm-hmm. you know when you are called and you have greatness in you. Because right. it comes at you real soon and real yes. quick. You are a child. And yes. someone is supposed to protect you and cover you, but yet mm-hmm. it's not done. And That's that right. leads us back to those generational curses. Yes. Somebody got to speak on it. Somebody yes. got to speak about it. Somebody got to talk about it. That's and right. So there is no more shame. Mm. Don't hide behind anything. Yes. Yes. Don't have no more secrets where the enemy can take and dangle them over my head. Or, That's or right. Throw them in, in, in my view. Or in <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> 
look here, yes. this is what you've done. So guess yeah. what? When I began to trust God and conquer and look at those fears that my family was not able to overcome, that's when my life began to change. And my not God. only my life, Paula, mm. but guess what? What I overcame, it allowed my children to overcome and even go further than me. And that's what it's about. Wow. So listen, I will tell whatever God tells me to do on whatever platform he gives me because God's been too good to me. And too I good. Some, too good. I hear some people say that, if God, if you never do nothing else, you've done enough. But guess what? What about when the world changes? What mm -hmm. about when something like the shut-in when the right. pandemic occurs? Don't we need God to do more? Absolutely. Yeah, God's been good. He's Absolutely. Been today and forever. <laughs> but guess what? What he did yesterday, he's tried to reconstruct some new things today. That's and right. As his servants, as his living epistles, as those who are his mouthpiece. Yes. We got to do and speak and declare and prophetically pray what God is wanting us to pray. That's right. That's um, right. Better movers, better shakers. <laughs> Listen, if, if we're going to see his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, then we've yes. got to do exactly what you're saying. We yes. cannot stand by and sit on our gifts, sit on our talents, sit on our anointing Come and on. think somehow we're going to change the world. We've got to be the ones out there doing things. We've got to be willing to uh, to put our reputation on the line. Some Come of on. us some of us value our reputation so much that we're, we're willing to hide in order to protect it. And what we don't realize is that we're hiding our light. God placed light in each, every, each and every one of us. And so we're supposed to shine out into the world so that they can see the way, the pathway to get to God. Mm -hmm. So listen, you are, you got me fired up over here. I'm telling you, cause you, you done <laughs> preached the whole message. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. So um, we've talked about the fact that obedience is really a big theme in your book, but we've also, you also just shared that, um, a part of your story was the molestation when you were a child. And you talked about the fact that sometimes the enemy will come after us when we're young. I have the same testimony. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll come when we're young to try to start early in drawing and keeping us away from our true identity. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll, tr he'll try to get us to, to, to take less than who we really are. So I want you to talk about, um, you know, the book is, the book was published and, and now you've shared it with your family members and your, you know, the people close to you. What, uh, what did they have to say? What did your children think about and your family think about this book? They were so honored because my family, if nobody knows me, they know me. You hear me? They knew yes. the old me. They, uh -huh. knew, they know the me now and the transition to me because listen, I don't want to remain the same. Right. I don't want to stay the same. I want to keep moving forward in God, whatever that looks yes. like. And so the subtitle of the book is Greater Obedience Does Produce Greater Trust and Faith in God. Mm -hmm. But we have to obey God. And like you said earlier, Paula, we are so caught up on what other people think and feel about us. Mm -hmm. we, we we tend to value their opinion more than we value God's opinion mm -hmm. and sometimes even our own. Mm -hmm. But when you come to a place to where you can't, you no longer care. Because you have to come to that point. Not that you don't love, but listen, <laughs> I can't care about the things that you care about more than I care about God and what God cares about for me and my life. This is why the word of God tells us we must each work out our own salvation. Own salvation. That's own right. salvation. It's Meaning personal. Your spouse can't work it out for you. Your that's children right. can't work it out for you. You can't work it out for your children. We got to each work it out for our own selves. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of the working out, Paula, that's when the enemy does his best work. <laughs> if we don't understand and realize we get past that point of wow. like, not work it out. You hear me? Yes, yes. You got to come out of self-righteousness mm. and, and begin to live and walk and breathe and eat and sleep in the righteousness of Christ because it's the grace of God. We're no longer under the law. We're, we're under the grace of God that covers us and carries us. Listen, in the midst of all of this, Paula, if I didn't know Rosie, some of the things that were being said about Rosie, I would have believed it as well. That's and right. Probably God was teaching me, let me be your vindicator. That's right. Be still and know that I am God. Because, yes. And I used to walk in self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. Knowingly, willfully, intentionally. Mm -hmm. But God pointed that out to me. And self-righteousness is doing anything other than what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. And what is right by what would Jesus do? Because then we're not taking on Christ's righteousness. So in the midst of that, when the enemy begins to try to throw these darts at you, these fiery th darts at you, and it seems like he's doing some separation, know that it's not him at work. Know that right. it's God redefining. Right. He's adjusting. 
He's aligning for what he has greater for you. So in the midst of that, yes, some people are going to look at you sideways. They're going to misjudge you, misunderstand you. Why don't you talk about you, all of that? But I tell you what, if you let God continue to redefine, to mold you and shape yeah. you and show you you, but not only show you you, but show you the God in you, who he in is you. in you and what he has. Oh, you're going to come out pure That's gold. That's right. That's no, right. No, no, nothing. Beauty into ashes. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's amazing. So I have a true confession here. Okay. And, and it just, it just hit me as you were talking. It okay. just hit me in the midst of our conversation. I'm finally getting a picture of what just happened. Okay. So, you know, this broadcast was originally supposed to air at 3.30 this afternoon. Come on. God has been speaking to me for the Come last on. month. Okay about starting broadcasting on YouTube. All right. <laughs> I vividly heard him. It wasn't like, oh, no, I'm not sure that was him. Oh, yeah. I don't really know if that was him, okay. et cetera. Uh -huh. But Paula, in her own mind, Come on. <laughs> oh, no, we're going to do it on <laughs> We're going to do it on Facebook. Come on. Facebook is where I have the most followers. Facebook has the most audience. Come yeah, on. we're going to do it on Facebook, God. I got this. Uh -huh. But guess what we're doing today? On YouTube. We're broadcasting on YouTube. <laughs> See, God is one of those, I said what I said. Come on. He doesn't, he doesn't repent when he says something Come because on. he's he has a clear path and a clear direction for us already mapped out. Yes, and yes. all we have to do is say yes to that to that direction and follow uh -huh. what he follow his lead and do what he's asking. But uh -huh. Paula, again, in, in my thought process. In my intelligence, I, I know better. I know what to do, guys. <laughs> so I'm just outing myself today because the very principle that you're talking about, mm -hmm. see, because this could be the catalyst to something greater that God is trying to get me to. This could be the open door for Rosie to expose you to someone who sees you on YouTube and has some, uh, an opportunity that could blow you out of the water. But had we not come to this platform in yeah. desperation today, <laughs> <laughs> desperately yeah. wanting to get this broadcast out to yeah. the public, yeah. then we wouldn't even be here right now. Yeah. So that's just one of those things that I just realized as we were conversing back and forth about obedience. It's in every area. Paula, it's not a coincidence, beautiful, that you said that because the Holy Spirit earlier today reminded me of a dream that I had about you. I believe it was back in 2015, uh, the position, the platform. Do you remember that? Of what I he's do. doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is another avenue for you. And this is going to broaden and open up, you know, because you never know who's going to tune in, whether they're tuning in right now or not. You never yeah. know. But God reminded me of that early today. And I was going to speak on that when God gave me, <laughs> I can see why he's doing that. So guess wow. what? This here comes some some of that movement, okay? And yes. the more, and I know you know the order and honor and obedience and faithfulness mm -hmm. of God and how good He's been. I mean, because look at you, Jewel. Yes. Nobody could ever tell your your story. Nobody can look at you and, and tell your story. Nor can they look at me and tell. But I, when I tell you what, honey, you look amazing. You look beautiful. <laughs> you are absolutely stunning and gorgeous from where I see, and I see the God in you. And you have so many gifts within you. And mm -hmm. guess what, beautiful understand this when God does a separation it doesn't have to necessarily mean that there's something wrong with you or something wrong with that person it just means right. that it's time. It and is. God will bring you back at a certain time mm -hmm. it's his, his timing where it's time but yes. so in the midst of that until we wait on that and we obey God understand that sometimes separations and I'm saying this to you Paula because this is something God told me earlier concerning what he showed me earlier there's going to be some separation you're like well who could be separated there's not too many people <laughs> Like, wait minute. a minute, <laughs> right? Yeah, but there is beautiful, okay? Yes, and not yes. that nothing's wrong, but yes. the time when God brings you back, it's like a—I mean, nobody's gonna be like an atomic bomb. You mm -hmm. hear me? Because mm -hmm. the, the the two be one, and yes. not talking about marriage, but just when right. God brings His what He wants to orchestrate together. Right. My God, one could put a thousand, two can put ten thousand. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing that God put on my heart that somebody needs to hear right now. Listen, <clears throat> the writing. The publishing calls, uh, the editing calls, uh, the books, the everything, even the book signing party, everything that it took to get this book into fruition. This is how you know it's God. I did not put not one dime, not one penny mm, to it. Wow. Not one. 
not one. So see how if the enemy would have made me try to think and try to trip me up, well, Rosie, how are you going to pay for that? Well, how are you going to pay for that? Right. It. Even when it came to the ISBN number, I didn't use a free one. I used one where it was very costly on the high end. And that was what God told me to choose. But when I tell you that God did this, Rosie had nothing to do with it. Rosie just allowed God, Rosie just gave God his yes. So when yeah. I allowed God to do it, I've not had to come up with one cent, not one penny. When I tell you, even the device I'm speaking to you on, this this uh, laptop, and it's a it's a new one, brand new, see wow. stone for me to go out and pick whatever I wanted. When I tell you to down to every detail, sis, he financed it. God financed your, and that's that's another way that you know that he's in it. You know, yes. sometimes we are looking at the financial investment yes. thinking, oh, gosh, that's so much. I don't know how I'm going to be able to afford that. Yes. I don't have that in my bank account or I don't yes. have that saved up. Come but on. when God calls you to a thing, he has a way of financing it. Yes, he does. And, and I mean, I have the same testimony with moving back to Oklahoma because yes. I initially I was thinking, OK, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm in business. I have my own business, but it's not necessarily enough to sustain me on a day to day basis. But when I tell you God has come through with clients and opportunities and things to keep me to sustain me Come on. without without having to take an outside job that's the kind of god that we serve come on that's you said it says see we don't understand the transitions and transformations of what god calls us to when he wants us to be still even like in the time that we're in now you have nothing but time to do what god has been calling you to do so now nothing. what excuse no excuses we, come on now <laughs> what excuse have we allowed the enemy to put in front of us or even us or even others to keep us from doing what god that's right that's doing. right and exactly. so listen that book mover shakers and standbyers what most people don't know is that during the time of this book you talking about coming from self-reliance because Rosie has always been a go-getter mm. uh, and Rosie has made things happen for herself. I never trusted God to meet my needs. He called me off of my job, Paula, full-time wow. as a registered nurse and began ministry full-time, which I were doing them both full-time and overtime. Yeah. He said, okay, one's got to give. And eventually yeah. I found myself where, where I feel like it wasn't my back up against the wall. They tried to put God's back up against the right. wall. Look, God's back too large for all of that. What you doing? <laughs> what you doing? But that was the last yeah. That was yeah. the last thought. It was enough for me. God had been telling me, but it was enough yeah. for Rosie to, I quickly handed in my resignation mm -hmm. because before then I was concerned with, how, you know, I'm the sole provider. My daughter, first grandbaby's on the way, right. X, Y, and Z. And when I tell you a lot of those miracles that happened, finance after finance, it's financial blessings and miracles. Wow. When I tell you, Paula, they just begin to come and they sustain it. You hear me? To care. I didn't have wow. to worry about it. But wow, look I at that. what in the midst of all of that, I had to make sure that I sought God, my prayer life, my fasting life, it had to become greater than what it was mm -hmm. and become hearing the voice of God clearer. Mm -hmm. so in the midst of all that, I began to realize, you know what, Rosie, you ain't been able to take care of yourself. I don't care how much money you have made or how much you haven't had, you've not been able to take care of yourself the way God can. And, wow. and guess what, Paula? I have lived the best days and moments of my life Mm -hmm. being unemployed. I agree. I, <laughs> I agree. Come on now. I agree. So yes. Even is, even in the midst of this, even in the midst of this pandemic, come on, even man. in the midst of a pandemic where people are panicking and scared and afraid and not knowing what to do yeah. and, you know, all of the things that come with that, I can tell you that these have been some of the most satisfying yeah. Some of the greatest encounters with God I've had during this season because now I'm still and I'm, I'm not, you know, doing, going and doing and all that kind of stuff. So really the kingdom lifestyle is the exact opposite of the world's lifestyle because the world, the world is depending upon self. Yes. The world is looking, what, what can I produce? What can I do for myself? How can yes. I protect myself? What yes. am I going to gain from this? But the kingdom lifestyle is dependent upon our father. He's the one who provides. He's the one who protects. He's the one who directs. He's the one who connects. So yes. listen, there's nothing like this kingdom lifestyle. I can tell you. My God, no, yeah. absolutely nothing like it. And when you said connect, listen, when we begin to walk out the process, because there's a process, yours there is different is. from mine, mine is different from yours, but look where your process allowed me to come in and even right. where it landed us today. We don't know what the future holds, but when you allow God to remove things, Mm -hmm. because timing is everything but when you allow God to even uh position you in certain areas you don't know what connections God is divinely setting up for you mm -hmm. listen 
I'm a living witness of this. I felt like as long as I had my BFF, my sister, Miss Hope in my life, because she is the one that really showed me the heart and the love of God. Mm -hmm. But you know what God, you know, God had to do some things and mm -hmm. it wasn't that nothing was wrong, but right. it was because I never saw myself doing right. something without her being a part of it, being with mm -hmm. me. And I mm -hmm. could trust her, trust her yeah. in my life. She's my, my children's second mom. Listen, yeah. mom, y'all better do whatever she tell you. They have <laughs> Yeah. But I tell you, because I made room in what God was doing in my life, the women that he has brought in my life wow. felt like my sister was enough. And wow. technically she was, but God yeah. said, godly, in the kingdom of God, she's not enough. She'll yeah. never be enough. And I'm more than enough. So I, me allowing God to do what he did, and she even understood, and she knew. You hear mm -hmm. me? We mm -hmm. both knew, we both respected it, and we both honored God and understood right. it. We didn't get beside ourselves or anything. We allow God to do what he could do. And when I tell you I, the things that God has accomplished within Rosie. And I see it. I see it. Yes, you are is. a different person. Like yes, you is. are, you are, you've always been you. But the, the Rosie that I see now, you have blossomed into a beautiful butterfly. I mean, I just, I, I see you, you're more out there. You're, you know, you're not hanging back in the shadows. <laughs> You're speaking. When you speak, there's so much fire in what you're saying that it 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 just lights me on fire. So I am just delighted to see you blossom and bloom and just come into your true identity you know, as a daughter of the king. And I'm so honored to call you my sister in Christ. Oh, I am truly deeply honored myself, Paula. You have no idea, sis. And I thank you. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, top and tip of my heart, beautiful for <laughs> the God in you, babe. And just, you know, how you walk and how you demonstrate and even how you love God. And that love, it shows up in everything you do. You hear me? So don't worry about being misunderstood. And I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to everybody that's listening yeah. <laughs> because we will be misunderstood because mm -hmm. when people don't understand what God is doing, sometimes we don't understand, but we right. honor God. Mm -hmm. because his ways and his thoughts are higher That's so right. then we gotta trust what we don't know and the more we trust what we don't know the more god can entrust with us what he's doing That's when he's right. doing how he's doing it because like he said i'm born born i'm 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 i'm, I'm really an introvert uh -huh. yeah <laughs> no, i am too i am too they're like an <laughs> introvert no you're not yeah. right no one would ever know no Nobody. one would ever know that the both of us are because i prefer uh -huh. um, solitary things. I prefer uh -huh. things that I'm just doing on my own. Yeah. Like even if, even if it's a crowd or a gathering, I prefer a smaller, you yeah. know, gathering as yeah. opposed to a large, you know, group. And so yeah. for me, this right here, yeah, this is like, wow. <laughs> you know, and, and this is why God called you and chose you, called mm -hmm. me and chose me because we rather do things and do it behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But see now what we've allowed God to do in, in our obedience and, and acts of faithfulness to him is brought us to that other end of the spectrum because you have the introverts and you have the extroverts, but then there's the ambiverts where, okay, there's balance. But one mm -hmm. thing the extroverts got to understand about the introverts is, listen, just because we got balance don't mean me, we need to stay over here with you all the time. We can't <laughs> do that we will gas out yeah. <laughs> and then we can't expect them to always come over here but god yeah. there's a need for each one of us that's to right come together in the right time but yeah. we got to understand that as an introvert and i'm preaching to somebody we do have to have our time sure, because sure. we can't always go and do and give and you know yeah. we'll gas out because we have to be built up mm -hmm. you know and so but i tell you when god created us when he created this world my God, and what we have to come away from is what we think creation is about. Yes. God did the creating. Yes. So we need, to, we need to understand what is the manual of the creation of That's God right. that created us yes. so that we'll know when and how to come together to formulate that greater plan. Wow. <laughs> you just said plan. a whole mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> you just said, I, I hope that people have ears to hear what you just said, because what you just said applies to every type of relationship, come on. be it friendship. Come on. Family, Come on. marriage, Come on. Uh, uh, church relationships, Come on. that can apply to all of that, what you all just said. All mm -hmm. of it. Husband and wife, all of it. Yes. All of it. Yes. All of honestly beautiful. Okay, so I was not a reader. Mm. Up until God called me to read, start reading mm -hmm. books, I think I maybe attempted three books and I just never finished them. 
Wow. So God, he put the, the, the desire in me to become a reader. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Reading is knowledge. It's yes. very powerful. Yes. And so the enemy knows that. So if he can keep you away from whatever resources, whatever tools, whatever avenue, even if it's somebody mentoring you and you being planted in the right ministry, if the enemy can keep you from that, he's snuffing out your purpose. That's right. And God has gifted each and every one of us to be purpose driven and make sure we're doing it with such passion and such mm -hmm. zeal. And your purpose, you'll give that away. Oh, yeah. free. That's yes. how you know you're doing what God has called you to do. That's okay? right. And That's so, right. listen, so because of that, when I tell you I love reading, now it's not mm. to say that I just want to read, read, read all yeah, the time. Yeah. But the best vacation for me would be to be able to get away, mm -hmm. secluded, <laughs> <from everybody, laughs> on the island, somewhere, just anywhere, yeah. and be in God and some good book and praise mm. and worship music. Mm. Listen. Things that I used to desire, I don't desire anymore. People right, think when right. that, that word says that he'll give you the desires of your heart, they think mm -hmm. it's what I want, what right. I need. No. When you learn to trust God and do the things that God, listen, a book, me becoming a reader, God done burst so much out of me and done poured so much knowledge into me to where it didn't come from Rosie. Yeah. And it was never my desire, yes. but it was God's desire God's that desire. became my desire because it's what he had for me all along and what he wanted for me all along. So right now, God is saying, there's more Rosie that I desire for you. There's more Rosie right. that I have for you mm -hmm. for each and every one of us, but it's going to take obedience. And yes. guess what? Me and you showing up, most people don't want to show up, Paul, mm. because they know there's going to be a level of account, greater accountability and responsibility. And if they tap into that, they know there's going to be more of a requirement. And listen, just because we don't show up does not mean that God is not going to hold us to account. That's right. That's right. You know I mean? mm -hmm. like Jonah. He didn't yep. want to go to Nineveh, you know, but God was still holding him accountable because he said, yes. you're supposed to do it. The right. message is in you that I want you to deliver. And finally, right. Jonah gave in and he yep. did it, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, it shouldn't be to where we give in. But listen, we understand, Paul, and I'm sure that you can relate to this as well. We understand the tests and the trials that come our oh, way. Oh, sure. Yeah. We understand pain. We mm -hmm. understand grief. We understand everything. We That's understand right. hurt. We understand devastation. We Heartbreak. Yes. yes. We yes. understand it all. But mm -hmm. guess what? The greater the call, the, the higher we got to come up. That's right. Because just because we understand something, when we take on the knowledge and revelations of God, it becomes so much clearer. Yes. It does not Absolutely. have that, that grip, Absolutely. confinement Absolutely. of what we used to think we knew. What we used to, but yes. it's what God knows. That's true. <laughs> that is so true. I was looking here at my phone because I wanted to see some of the comments that um, we, we've got a lot of amens. I'm going to just tell you that <laughs> a lot of amens here. Amen. Um yeah. Uh, says, uh, sis, I got the same message to begin YouTube. Wow, LaShonda, girl, All right. let me tell you, you better get on it. <laughs> uh, somebody said, yes, God. Uh, they were amening, amening. I'm with both of you. Yes, she has. Rosie's amazing. So yeah, we've, we've gotten some comments and, and those who have been uh, following and watching. And I did post it on Facebook, but I'm not so concerned now that I've come to an understanding of what God was trying to do all along oh. and saying that the pl your platform is on YouTube. Come and on. so I'm going to be obedient from this point on. All of my <laughs> Brilliant Awakening uh, TV episodes will be on uh -huh. YouTube. And okay. this will be just the beginning of a series of uh, amazing, awesome people that, um, that I'm going to be interviewing. But I'm so honored that you kicked it off, Rosie. I'm so honored to have you. And I want you to share with our viewers, where can they find you? Where online can they find your books do you have a website how can they uh, find you well the website is to come but the books um i'm on facebook under rosie thompson as well as the books can be purchased on amazon.com and uh, barnes and noble and you just type in mover shakers and stand buyers make sure you look for this book title cover and you'll see that and you can purchase it online as well as for those who would like to purchase it through me I have a cash app and it's the dollar sign mover, no S, shaker, no S, stand buyer, no S, just mover, shaker, stand buyer. And what okay. you do is uh, because of this promotion here, we're going to run it for 24 hours. The book, no matter if you purchase for, from me or offline, is $17.99, but I'm going to give it out for $15. Also, the cost of it to, for the shipping and handling through Amazon.com, unless you have some special, and nothing wrong with specials, it's normally more than my shipping and handling charge, which would be $5 flat rate for me to mail it to you. 
So, and then no taxes on there. You're going to pay taxes. I'm not encouraging you guys not to order through them because I want to build that base up as well. But I just want you to have the options to know that I'm running a special where the book is going to be $15 plus the $5, which is $20 and no taxes included. And it will include your shipping and handling. What you need to do in that in the cash app comment section is put your address of where you want me to mail it to. Okay. And so that's how you can get your hands on the book. I'm also on, um, I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram as well. So we are building up those sites as well for the book itself. And then also there is a site on Facebook of the Mover Shakers and Standbys as well, because I know some things are going to be coming uh, into fruition. And so uh, also I would like for you guys to know that yes, Rose is open to speaking at different engagements, conferences, yes. events, small groups, women groups, large groups, whatever. I'm coming out. I'm, I'm not going to be back anymore. <laughs> she, I'm gonna you're go here. <laughs> From what I heard today, listen, if you don't uh, get Rosie to come and speak at your women's event or your event, you are missing out because this woman is anointed. I mean, and, and I know that everything that she shares comes from personal experience and personal relationship with God. She spends much time with God, hearing from him, uh, fasting, praying, reading her word. And I know that she is the real deal. So you definitely want to, if you're having a women's retreat or women's conference or anything coming up later in the year or even into 2021, 20, uh, you definitely want to get Rosie booked uh, to speak at your event. Um, I think I just saw another. I think I just saw another. So, and Paula, you while you're looking at that beautiful, I want to give them the email address of Movers Shaker oh. Stand Buyers 2019 at Gmail. If you have a comment, engagement, or whatever, you can send that to me through there as well. It's Movers Shakers Stand Buyers 2019 at Gmail.com. Okay, thank you so much for clearing that up. And Miss Karen Lawrence says, so to order from Minister Rosie is a total of twenty dollars for the for the total. Twenty dollars, uh, and it's a special for twenty four hours. Yes, in her cash app, use the cash app dollar sign mover, not s shaker, not s standby, um, standby, mover shaker standby, and then put in the comment section. Uh, the uh, address where she wants to mail to. Absolutely. Okay. And LaShonda, thank you so much. She shared uh, your Cash App name on YouTube awesome. so awesome. that people could be uh, awesome. able to take advantage of that. Yeah, because we definitely want to get this book in your hands. And for those of you who are wanting to know, how can I move forward in this season where it's, it, I'm really feeling strongly that God is, is tugging on me. He's pulling on me to uh, do something different. He wants to use me in a different way, but I just don't know how to get started. Obedience is the key, but sometimes even in obedience, you need more direction. And I can tell you that Mover Shakers and Stand Buyers is a book that you want to get in your hands because it, it's literally a manual on how to hear the voice of God, follow the voice and obey the voice of God so that your outcome can be what he wants it to be and not necessarily what you would have it to be because sometimes our plans are different than God. Most of the time, our plans are different than God's plan. Rosie, thank you so much for being a guest. I, again, I appreciate you kicking this season off of Brilliant Awakening TV. We have another guest coming in a couple of weeks, but listen, this has been purely delightful. We actually went longer than uh, was scheduled, but that's okay. I love it. I want everyone to be able to get uh, take a look at this and get and glean some of the nuggets that you shared this afternoon on the broadcast. So thank you. God bless you. And looking forward to seeing you in person once all this is over with. Yes, yes. Thank you, Miss Paula, for having me. And for those of you that have tuned in, I want you to follow Paula on social media. If you're in the midst of needing book cover design or even writing a book, she's your go-to. When I tell you she's a woman of excellence, when I tell you God has craft, uh, given her such craft and creativity and vision and insight to where her work is just is spectacular. I kid you not. And, and it's with anything that she does. Her heart is in it, the heart of God. So listen, if you need that, reach out to Paula, connect with her and make sure you follow these YouTubes. Okay. Let's help her build up this platform. And it's not you do this for me and I do this for you. No, let's do this for our sister. How about that? And just Absolutely. let God bless her. Sit back and watch the blessings of the Lord overtake her because his blessings add no sorrow. <laughs> well, thank you for that commercial. I appreciate it. Yes, Brilliant Awakening TV is powered by Stellar Creative LLC. We are an Oklahoma-based company, but our reach is international, literally international. And so you can reach us at, uh, my website is paulamcday.com. That's P-A-U-L-A-M-C-D as in dog, A-D as in dog, E, 
paulamcday.com. You can learn more about my uh, company. You can learn more about my speaking, my books. I'm an author. I'm the editor in chief of Brilliant Awakening Magazine. I do lots of things. So you want to go to that one place and find out everything about uh, what it is that I do and connect with me there. Also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Make sure that you continue to follow us because we've got some more good stuff coming your way. So with that, we're going to sign off and say uh, goodbye until next time, until our next broadcast. God bless and we'll see you uh, next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>